We are back! Formula One is back, finally. Zandavart, here we go. This is gonna be a very interesting track for several different reasons, but this video is all about weather and how it's gonna affect the weekend. Uh, so Zandavart, very uh, tight track, old school track as well. Uh, you can see this is a slightly older picture, but still a very uh, windy and twisty track. It is not good for wet weather as we've seen in the past. Last year, this is what the uh, forecast was for on F1.com. We, uh, we'll just concentrate on Sunday. There's only a light chance of showers in the morning with sunny spells in the afternoon <laughs> with a chance of rain of 40%. Now, let's talk about what 40% actually means because people are like, oh, 40%, it must be 40% of the uh, sky is filled with rain. But that's not actually what the, that means. This is weather.gov, and despite being some of the worst grammar I've ever seen, the most least understood elements, um, they give a pretty good rundown as to what percentages mean. So I like the examples at the end. Uh, if the forecast is 80% certain that the rain will develop, but only about 50% of the forecast area, then the forecast reads a 40% chance of rain. If the area precipitates 100% coverage, the, but they're only 40% uh, certain that that's gonna happen, this will result in a 40% chance of rain. So it can be very rainy for a lot of the day without actually having a very high percentage of rain. So we're gonna close that and we're gonna keep that in mind when we look at this. So uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday's supposed to be very windy and there is some rain leading up into uh, the weekend. Zandvoort is a fairly used track. They have quite a few things that go on there throughout the weekend, all the support races associated with that. So the track should be fairly rubbered in come the weekend, but Friday is supposed to look a little bit wet. If you, uh, three o'clock is when a lot of the action happens. So if we pull up three o'clock, there's a 36% chance. But if you look down here in this hourly liquid percentage in inches, there's actually some rain coming down pretty much the whole time. So it's it's going to be a rainy Friday. So that means that their testing for their weekend coming up is going to be a little bit interrupted, but not too much. Uh, keep in mind when it says 0.1 of an inch, the reason they're saying that is 0.1 of an inch is how much it takes to make a puddle on the ground. If you have less than 0.1 of an inch, it means that uh, puddles aren't forming, so it's like mist in the sky. So again, keep in mind, when they say percentage of chance of rain, they're talking about percentage of chance of rain to make a puddle. So it can actually be raining out without any chance of rain, because that's not the standards that any weather channel goes by. So keeping that in mind, what we had last year looked something like this. This was 27th of August last year, and it very was, it's very, it reminds me a lot of England and this is a this is not a landlocked country or anything like that. They're fairly close to the ocean, so uh, you get these little pockets of rain that fly over the place. And we saw not too long ago what happened in uh, Silverstone. I feel like the Saturday is going to be a lot like that. We'll see in that Saturday again. Three o'clock is qualifying time, their local time, fifteen hundred hours, and you see that again thirty four percent chance of rain. But if you look down in the actual rain accumulation down here, it is raining a bit, not. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So uh, I think Friday and Saturday are going to be rain affected. And then Sunday, it's hard to say. If you look at three o'clock again, three o'clock, 4% chance of rain. And there's nothing down here accumulated. So it's really kind of uh, not looking like a rainy day on Saturday. Last year, we had quite a bit of rain. We saw several mistakes be made out on the track. One for me, the biggest one, and this is gonna be a big weekend for Sergio Perez, is he came in before the team was ready to switch to inters and it cost him quite a bit of time. There was lots of mistakes out there and they actually switched over to some pretty heavy rain tires. So I think we're not really gonna see that during the race, but qualifying, keep in mind, this track is very tight. So I brought it up here just so we can discuss the track a little bit. Since they changed it in 2022, uh, the track has been widened in several places, but for the most part, it's kind of another Monaco uh, without walls this time. So like uh, a lot like Hungary, but I mean, they can get by here. There's some fun different lines into Hugenholtz. You saw Alonso a couple years back doing some crazy lines into there. Uh, you can get by in Tarzan, but because of the way the track is laid out, the top end of this track is kind of like uh, medium speed, or high speed, medium speed corners. 
So all of this, when you go around in a Formula One car, if you do it in iRacing, it's the lower down leagues there. Like if you're in a road car, it's very much slow in through here. But in a Formula One car, a lot of this is flat out. There's some slight braking here. There's a bit of braking into here, but it's only a little bit. They don't even go down really into fourth. Uh, this is very fast. Uh, Hans Ernst is probably the hardest braking part in the whole circuit. Uh, Tarzan, just because of your relative speed, but this is a very heavy braking part. And this has been opened up in recent years, so it's actually pretty easy to get around there. Uh, and then the rest of that is all very, very fast. So the reason why I say the rain could affect them on Saturday is because you can't really get Bry in the dry here. It's it's not really super overtakey when it comes to a circuit. And that's because aside from the finishing corner all the way to the first corner, it's kind of not it's kind of like a one track kind of place you can sometimes get by in Hans Ernst just because of that run up there if you get a good run out of uh, turn 10 and then sometimes into Hugenholtz but and then Tarzan but there's really only the kind of three places there that you see a lot of overtaking and that's going to mean a lot for setup so cars that are set up really well to take corners regardless of their setup change so i think the mclarens are going to be very good here especially if it's going to rain on a friday and a saturday because we saw in silverstone as soon as the rain came down uh mercedes was slower and ferrari was slower not just because of their strat strategies but we saw mclaren be very quick in the rain in silverstone and it's supposed to be quite cool it's usually uh, it's usually just in under the 70s and yeah, that's what it's supposed to be like on Saturday and Sunday Even when the Sun's baking out It's not supposed to get above 67 degrees and the real feel there ie the relative humidity uh, it Has no effect whatsoever. So it's it's going to be a nice day out uh, a nice day at 67 in showers is probably not that nice, but uh, in the sun, 67 is going to be lovely. I think that that Saturday in the rain is really going to put the McLarens way, way ahead of everybody else because they're naturally quick through the corners. They don't have to make huge setup changes, which means they're going to be very quick in the straights. So you want your car to be slippy for this because this it doesn't show how fast this straight is because you don't break for this final corner and you just barely, barely break for the penultimate corner. It's just a tap of the brakes to get the rotation into the car. So all the way from here, all the way down to Tarzan is almost flat out. So you end up getting to pretty high speeds on this straightaway. So uh, being able to be slippy here, if you're naturally slippery, I think the Williams will probably be pretty quick because uh, they are a very efficient car. So you'll see that in, into that. So I think the rain is really going to help McLaren out because they're going to be able to be quick on a Sunday without having to really change their setup. So they'll have natural downforce again through the rest of the course, which the McLarens are a pretty efficient car and they're a pretty overall good car. Uh, I don't think the Ferraris are going to be good here. Typically, they're not very good in a medium downforce uh, layout, which is most of this track is what that is. So they'll be good through the final straights, but that's about it. Hard to say with the Red Bulls. That's another big thing to look for. Their downward trend uh, could keep on happening. Uh, this is Hugenholtz, by the way. So the biggest thing for the rain here on Saturday is, and more for a Sunday as well, is that when a track becomes rainy, uh, a lot of the rubber down, the uh, rubber that get, gets laid down is going to be washed away. And when the support races happen on Sunday, it's still supposed to be a little bit slippy in the morning, which means that they won't lay rubber down the same. It kind of gets, it goes down on the track, but it doesn't get stuck as well. And it actually comes off as marbles as soon as you go down in the dry. So it, it like peels off a lot easier rather than can, uh, staying stuck down. So this, this corner in particular is gonna be very interesting in the wet slash dry because this corner doesn't really have a standard line. In support races, so if you see the Porsche Cup come around here, they're gonna stay up very, very high. Uh, you'll see if you race in, in iRacing, you, staying up very high is, is the way to go here. You can, you can keep your average speed up. In the rain, you wanna stay off of that rubber down area because the water pools on it easier because all the porous of the asphalt is being bedded in with rubber and when the rain comes down it acts like just like if you ever that's why people fall in the shower a lot because you don't have any sort of surface to pool away water so you can actually touch on actual ground and why it's the exact same effect here is because where there isn't rubber laid down that's where you want to go because the water can go inside the track a little bit 
and get washed away and you'll actually have contact with the asphalt rather than a bunch of rubber that's really slippery. If you've ever driven a motorcycle and driven on painted lines, you'll know exactly what I mean. The paint actually goes into the asphalt and makes it so it's very slippery. Uh, water can pool on it. But this Hugenholtz doesn't really have a line, so you're going to have rubber everywhere. So it's going to be very, very touchy. And because of this it's difficult to tell right here, but this is a huge banking circuit. They don't make banking circuits like this anymore. This is an amazing corner. It's one of my favorite corners in Formula One. But if you get this wrong and you get a little bit twitchy, although this corner is pretty slow, uh, you'll easily run off into here and this wall comes up really quick. And even if you get kind of a snap oversteer, uh, you're going to end up over here. You can actually see the tires in the mud here, and that's kind of where you end up, is up here in this wall. Once you rejoin back on track, there's actually a hill just after this that's a bit unsighted, and you'll wash back across the track, taking other people out. So uh, it's a very interesting corner for the wet, and we saw some serious, serious close calls uh, last year. I think that's going to be a big thing. But Zandvoort all over is fairly quick in this back end, so you'll come up around here, and the elevation change is hard to tell here. This goes uphill very much, and this is a downhill braking zone here. Very hard to do uh, with a lot of speed. So you can see a lot of people getting stuff wrong here. And a lot of these walls are pretty close to the track. There's not a lot of runoff, uh, except for on these uh, heavier braking circuits here. But down here uh, at Hens is is very tight and the walls come up pretty quick on you. So we should see quite a few uh, people go off. We saw Guan Yu Zhou go off last year, pretty heavy into the wall during the race. But I suspect that the, the day to watch will be Saturday. Uh, because if we have a drive running around track, it's going to be very hard to get around. And you can see how close this is to the ocean. A lot of that breeze will be coming off and it'll be it'll be coming, especially as the day goes on, the, the the breeze will come more and more off the water and you'll see people get a lot of these corners that are like this because the breeze is going to be pushing on the back of your car and throwing your braking zones off. So uh, Hugenholtz will be probably fine, but the back half of this circuit in this area will probably see a bunch of people into this gravel, possibly even Perez, which would be bad for him. So that's the weather for this weekend. Hopefully we won't see... Uh, too much change to that. I think this will be a good mix of what we want to see. I would like to see a nice dry running around here, seeing as we saw rain last year. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second, and we'll see you guys next time.